Magic the Gathering is a game about stories. And I don't mean the stories within the game, the lore, the characters, and I don't necessarily mean the story on the tabletop, playing cards and developing your board and telling the story of how the game went. No, I mean the story of the players. The way that they interact with each other, the way that they engage with the game, and the way that magic teaches lessons. I believe that everybody who plays magic has a story about that one deck that shaped the way they view games in general. I'm going to continue my series, The Decks That Made Us, asking people about that one deck that changed the way they engage with magic and the way they engage with everything else. So today, my guest is someone that I have known since the day they were born. My brother, Dean. Hi there! I'm Dean. How's the mic? Uh, <clears throat> Hello? Is this thing on? Today, we're taking it all the way back to 1999. I remember To the it well. first decks we ever played. Dean, why don't you talk a little bit about what you're going to be playing today? This is the Mercadian Mass Disruptor deck, and I didn't know that it was called that until today. But uh, I knew it by the picture, and that, uh, that is that. But it's, it was a red-black deck, and I remember losing a lot, and that's pretty much the gist of that. And a lot of the pictures, like I said. Yep. Yeah, and myself, I will not be playing the first deck that I ever bought because this wasn't a deck. It was a tournament pack. And I didn't know that, so I got 75 random cards, and I also lost a lot. This was not a great game for us initially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, I lost to you. You just lost to other people. <laughs> Well, that was the order of that. So today I'm going to be playing my take on the Nemesis Precon, uh, I believe it's called the Replicator deck. Um, but yeah, it's green-black, it plays a lot of creatures, it should be a good matchup. But before we get into that, why don't you pull up a chair, have a seat at the table, and whether you're a button mash, hack and slash, controller bash, or a people mover and people mover. <laughs> if you ruffle at the awful riffle shuffle scuffle, are you a stiffle doobly 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 We're all here for the same reason. I'm Jake. And I'm Dean. Let's talk games. Intro music. Oh. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle. All right, so while we're getting set up here, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about your deck and kind of your first experience with going into the game shop and picking up cards? Yeah. It all began in a fine rainy day in October 1999 when we were going shopping for Dad's birthday at the mall, which we didn't go to a lot, but I remember we went we for holidays, like Christmas and birthdays and... We were going there for something from Sharper Image or something, and we stumbled into, I believe it was like Game Empire or something thereof. It wasn't Games Workshop, but it was some random game shop in the in the mall. I think that was after Wizards of the Coast closed, right? They weren't Wizards of the Coast stores. They were like their own thing. Yeah, I was Like eight, some game so kingdom or something. Had yeah. no idea. I don't know. The week before, I had asked Santa for a PlayStation and got it and believed it was Santa. So I don't know a lot of things, but I know I walked in. <laughs> And, and you had been, like, talking about magic with some friends from school or something, and you tried to convince mom, we should get, we should get some cards. And then it was like, well, which ones do you want? And then it was like, uh, oh, well, here's your options. There's four of them. And it was the, it was, there the, the deck boxes. It was, well, there, okay, there were five. And, um, and, uh, one of them had this really cool looking, like, uh, I know there's magic you can do to show, but, it's uh like oh wow and then and the way you described it I think you were like oh yeah there's this white deck that does something blah blah, blah. there's this a uh, green deck that does something blah, blah blah and then it's like and then there's this red and black deck which has zombies or no it doesn't it didn't even have zombies no it, it doesn't like, have zombies this yeah. is black deck that like has I don't know you described some ghouly things or something and I was like wait red and black that means I can do twice as many things and uh that's not how it works for anyone who's curious yeah and uh but i thought oh that's cool so i went with that one um and yeah then i remember buying this deck 
and this is just a tournament pack that has random cards in it. But this is a title Kraken, I think is the, the name of the card. And it was in here. So for the longest time, I had had the impression that you bought a tournament pack and it came with the card that was on the cover. Because oh. that's how all of these worked. Yeah. And so you were just But that's like, not oh, how it works. Good card. Yeah. Well, the other thing that was interesting that I... I, I uh, I read this at one point, is that Urza's block, the Urza Saga, Urza's Legacy, yeah. were like overtuned. So for Mercadian Mask, they turned the tune the power way down. Oh, yeah. And so then I'm like, I'm sticking loyally to my red and black deck and just like, oh, yeah, this is this is the one that's going to like take me to the big time as an eight-year-old, you know, with my ambitions to beat my brother at Magic. And then you come up with like your elf deck. You come up with... This other deck, and you're implementing stuff from Invasion and from whatever else you can get your hands on. And here I am with my Mercadian Mask Undertune deck and trying to compete. And so after I think losing a number of times, um, I started like I started going. Don't forget. How can I improve the upgrades? Yeah. How can I upgrade my deck? <laughs> Bam, crosses. <laughs> and so I turned a little bit of blue into it because I could. I thought dragons. What's stronger than a dragon? What's stronger than a dragon? Slivers. But uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> All right. Uh, how many cards do I draw again? Hasn't been that long. I don't know. Since I've played not EDH, it may well have been. Well, well it's so funny looking at these. I'm, look I'm not even going to... That's going to be a no for it, me. I don't think it's going to even matter. Although, it, it's not a bad hand. <laughs> um, it's just bad cards. It, it really might... No, but it's funny because I look at these pictures and I'm like, oh man, the pictures. I can remember the pictures, at least of okay. the black cards. <laughs> so I think I just kept them in my deck longer. Yeah. yeah. Well, also the red cards are bad that came in this. Like a lot of the red cards are really mediocre. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I heard that like you told me that Snuff Out is the only one that still has any kind of value. <laughs> Maybe a couple other cards. Oh, yeah. So I looked at the prices of these two decks. We can talk about that real quick. Uh, the Disruptor deck is $27. Woo! And 21 of that is the two snuff outs it came with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Affordable. The, the, rep Discount. the Replicator deck is $11. Oh, man. There is nothing in so here that's worth real money. Bad. But you, I know you did not stay on this deck long. You were, like, in it to win it with all your friends at school. And I was only ever playing you. Oh, yeah. And for me, it wasn't even, like... It wasn't about beating you as much as it was about looking at these cards and going, oh my gosh, look at this mountain. It's so cool. And I imagine like the mountain is exploding and the lava is coming up and then like, oh, rain of tears. There's these like, these tar things coming down and I'm picturing the story. And for me, it was so much more about the imagination until I lost a lot. And then it became about the math for me. <laughs> and then it became, how can I win? And then my competitive edge came out. It was like, oh, no. And then slowly but surely, you converted the deck to have zero cards that started in the exactly. deck. So I'm going first, right? Because of all that time that I Absolutely. lost. Absolutely. And then the loser goes yes. first. Yeah, you can go we first. We can easily I establish think, myself think that's as safe. Absolutely. Oh. Uh... All right. Oh, yeah, you can see my opening. Yeah. yeah. Not yet. That's okay. That is a big first turn. You done? Yeah, that's it. All right, I have high hopes because I'm starting with a Harvest Mage, turn one. Okay, well, we yeah, know who's gonna win this? One. Go ahead. And with my action, <laughs> you didn't see this coming. Yeah, sure. Uh, we're building up. We're building up. We're building up. We're getting there. Your turn. All right, so I'm gonna <laughs> untap and draw. Uh, let's put a force down. I will attack you for one. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll uh, take it. I'll cool. Take okay. It like a All right. So you go to 19. My, one of the instants in this card. The, yeah, the I know. There's, there's me to, not no. a lot. We know there's exactly two snuff outs. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> um, go ahead. All right. Yeah, although that would take four life to stop All right. one. Now we got this going. Now we're going. All right. Now we got it. Because, of course, everything has a cost of three. But uh, we can we can make this happen. You know it would be funny? No, I got I to gotta, I gotta make something happen. This will be good. All right, let's get some blocking happening. Oh, Your nice. turn. You know, I, what I love about magic is that there is like a, because I was thinking about this, like what is, what is magic like? Why do I enjoy magic? Or what do I like about games? And I love the fact that magic is this game of rules. And um, 
that's interesting because I love to optimize within a framework that is established. I played soccer for four years before I played mm-hmm. Magic. And in soccer, you would think there would be some, some well, there goes that. You would think there would be some some bad things, uh, some black and white. I'll take it again. Uh, thank you, though. But, uh, yeah, all right. all right. We're moving around. It's fine. fine. But then, like, you have this referee come in and just totally do just do something that you think is not right. With magic, there re, there's refs, obviously, but what they're doing is they're they're ordaining the interactions of cards that are already established. There is there is no gray area. There's black and white. Mm-hmm. The rules make sense unless people cheat, which I know you know depending on who yeah. You're and the other thing I love about this and kind of these older sets, the cards are specific. Like the things that they do, it's it's Very specific, you only have definitely. to look at what's on the board. There's not a lot yep. of tokens or other things you're keeping track of. Yeah, uh, yeah, your turn. But as a new player, though, here I am playing against this giant block of text, and I'm going like, uh, that's a <laughs> lot of text to read through. So every time you play something, I'd be like, what does that do? Um, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. But by the time you have like six things out, I just give up and I start going, okay, big brother, tell me what it does. <laughs> What does that do? I get to search for three more copies of it and put it in my hand. I didn't even listen to half of that, so I trust that it works. But I feel like if you're playing with someone who's just gonna, like, min- wait, what? Oh, gosh. See, I, again, I didn't listen, and now things are happening. I'm like, well, apparently that was bad for me. Uh, apparently. I'm not reading through all these words. I just, so that was hard for me, because it's like, every card is a rule and it's like if you tried to teach someone monopoly yeah. but every space had a no like a super unique rule and you're reading through it all oh it's hard for a new player to get Absolutely. all the rules down i can't detect <laughs> oh fantastic for once i'm at 18 i believe we scoot down just a little bit here just uh sure, 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 sure. i want to make sure we're in frame i'm at 18 what are you at Oh, I'm at 20. Oh, good. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. yeah. we'll keep yeah. grosses this, here. This seems about... Referee. Oh, uh, yeah. The nostalgia is really hitting right now. <laughs> okay. You done? Yeah, this is the authentic Unta- uh, Mercadian Masks uh, experience. Jura. Boy, if only I had that card still in. Uh, Croesus as my free play. Oh, nice. Nice. Deckmaster. Okay. Uh, <laughs> by the way, it's just it's funny with no sleeves. It's like, just scratch it along the back and scratch it hey, on the back. Let me pick up this card. It's really hard to get the corner uh, here. Did you get that corner yeah. there? <laughs> Remember, ten dollar deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Where where are we going with this? I think I have a funny a funny thing to do. No. So in terms of magic, how has this kind of impacted the way you see other games outside of just magic, like gaming in general? Yeah. What I found was that, uh, like I was saying before, the the um, the, what was I saying before? Oh yeah. That. <laughs> well, now I've moved right along with that thought. That there is this bounded rule set. And there's so much complexity brought in by the, each one of these being a different a different lever you can pull and having its own rules that you can play. And uh, but it's very cut and dry, black and white. Every card you can be perfectly adjudicated as far as how it interacts with every other card, um, which was really cool because there was never any kind of gray space for like a referee to 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 uh, I don't know. Um, change the rules on you midway through. But what I did find, yeah, this will be, this will, be, this will get you good. <laughs> Destroy your only swamp. Blah, <laughs> but you hate that. Yeah, I don't know if swamps are good in this deck. As, no, right now it looks like an all green deck with a random swamp. <laughs> hey, I played a bag of there. destroying it nevertheless. <laughs> I have a few black cards. And then we'll do this and do Spectre's Whale. Discard a random card from your hand. Ooh, that's actually a little bad now. Is it I a know wolf? that's not always how you do it. It's probably a wolf. Ah! Get out of here. <laughs> now you're only down to two of them. Uh, and then I'll... I'll attack for... None. None's how many I will attack. But okay, that's a, just a, that's a four, four. four four. Yeah, it's just a, a big dude. Yeah, sure. But yeah, so going into other games, though, like, for example, I love that D&D game. And it's like, there's rules and stuff. I, I got them. But there's this gray, sp- gray area where the rules kind of go out the window. Mm-hmm. And in a certain way, that makes it much more, uh, it makes you able to be very creative, but it also kind of potentially makes it so, like, for example, the DM can change the rules on you, especially if they're, ah, I don't like that. That's okay. We'll be fine. Uh, can can be only fly. be blocked by creatures with flying. Perfect. I'll play my flying zombie. I will attack you for five. I am down to 13. 
And go ahead. Unless I'm miscounting or cheating. <laughs> Which that seems be, reasonable. Yeah, yeah, classic 1999. Uh, we didn't have dice to keep track yet, so this is actually very appropriate. No, it's all in your head. It's a tw You can count to 20. Everyone's got fingers and toes. Um... Ooh, are there graveyard interactions in this? No. <laughs> I was just looking at that for posterity. Oh, I miss you so bad. <laughs> um, yeah, one of the things I really like about magic, like you were saying, the structured rules are really cool, but also the way that they kind of encapsulate different lores on different planes, where you get that flexibility where each set does feel like it's kind of own insulated universe mm -hmm. from the rest of the game mm -hmm. and it gives them so much flexibility uh like I, I think that's why i feel the impulse to always make my D, &D campaign super unique and weird like each one has to be a completely different plane of reality yeah you get to take a creature back back to life <laughs> but what i and while i love that additional creativity D, &D gives mm -hmm. uh as far as like unleashing my 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 uh imagination I've always really liked the the rigidity of magic. No, the, the consistency of magic. The, mm -hmm. uh, it's not unexpected. As long as I understand interactions and I can read the rule as written out there, basically cards become the rule book. How do you have three owls? <laughs> great. That's great. You got a lot of wolves out there. Yeah, okay, it's fine. We're fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. I let the dogs out. Yep. Yep. We're fine. Uh, but yeah, as long as you can read all the rules here. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, I feel like I gotta... Yeah, I'd say one of the other things I like about Magic specifically is that it has randomness, but it's randomness kind of on the front end, right? Where you randomly get stuff, and then you figure out how to put the pieces together. Yeah. Instead of the reverse, where you want to do a thing, and maybe don't get to do that. Mm. Like that that randomness yeah, in the back that's half that's a really good a point. I am gonna attack. Let's go aggressive with it. Um, I will block with my Harvest Mage. And I'm down to 13. So I'll be fine. And this will come back into play. Okay. Regenerate. Yep, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> your turn. Yeah, that might have been not the trade I wanted to make. Uh, that's decent. I can't really... <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> play as a land, I dare you. No, I need my swamp. <laughs> yeah, play a swamp, I dare you. Wolf. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> a lot of wolves you got there. I'm going to attack for five. For five. <laughs> is... Plus one, plus one, can only be blocked. I am down to eight. I forgot that he can only be blocked by creatures with four. Um, and walls did, don't did have Did you pay two life to regenerate this? Uh, yeah, yeah. So then I'm, you're at six. No, no, I did. I was at 15. I was at 15. I don't think so. Because I hit you twice with this. 18. Once with this. 13. 11. Six. Six sounds bad. It does sound bad. Six sounds pretty okay. you low. You probably have, have answers in there. Camp block. All right. I'll tell you this ahead of time. This can search for flyers. I'm oh, I'm yeah. ninety percent sure you have All one right. mercenary flyer in your deck. You at least. Done? I'm done. Does that help me? Does it, that help you can me block it several turns. You right. have mana. Heart of the cards. Ah, uh, that means something. Something. Hey, lands are real cards. Uh, let's start off by. I don't know how many black, how many, how many swamps I want to keep. Okay. Doesn't matter. I just need, I think I should be fine. All right. Searching the card. Hey, we get to see all these. Oh, it's Molding Harpy. Silence, silence. Yeah, these are cards I haven't seen in a long time. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, that's actually a new one. That's kind of funny. I'll take that. Oh, no, it's so close to not. Um. Oh, but then I. Not good. Okay, hold on. Maybe we need to go. I'll let you focus on this. Five. Take the deck. <laughs> skip this boring part. Oh, oh, is it These mercenary card? Oh my gosh, that uh, that further uh, handicaps me. Oh, but that's a mercenary. It is so much fun. <laughs> Which one should I get? That would that would be asked a lot, I think, <laughs> to start with. I don't know. <laughs> It's funny because in reading through these, it's very much like how magic has always been for me, where mm -hmm. there's, I'm, I'm like reading all these things and I have to read all of them and understand them and come to, to come to like 
to, to be familiarized with them. And unfortunately, by doing that, I am at a, dis like a strict disadvantage to someone who like can just spot a card and go, yeah, I know what that is. I know mm -hmm. what that is. And so the more I would play with a deck, even if it was bad, I could definitely become better at like the game just because I didn't have to read as much. Ooh, that's a good time. That's yeah, I kind of wonder how much that impacts, you know, new players in Commander. Yeah. Because the, the format is so big. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wonder if it would be benefited from having a restricted card pool, but that's also antithetical to what Commander is. Well, but that's... Because right? that's the whole point. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing that was... That's... It, I literally... Did, there's nothing else I can do. Where did I put my hand? Did you did you just shuffle your hand into the deck? That's all like that. Isn't that your graveyard? Oh, it's the bottom two cards of the deck. Oh, there okay. we go. <laughs> <clears throat> well, yeah, but okay, but that's the thing that I kind of like about about um. Well, the other the other problem is as I'm playing with this deck, mm -hmm. um, into play. Yeah, go straight away. Well, I guess that's fine then. It's like the only mercenary form. Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah. It. <clears throat> but yeah, um, boy, there's a lot of thinking when you have to read so much and re, re familiarize yourself with. Well, that's video. the other thing. These cards are 20 years old and they're bad. So nobody's playing yeah, these, I cards. Seen these, like, these cards. But I mean, but then you move along and now there's like cards that are simply better than Mercadian Mask's starter deck. Yep. And so, unfortunately, you get outscaled. So then you, you get in... what I kind of fell out of love with Magic because to a certain degree, I was just getting outpaced. I mean, mm -hmm. I'd make this upgrade to my deck. It would become a, a cool mono-black zombie deck or whatever. I had a Croesus, red, black, blue. All these things are cool. And then a new set would come out, new cards that I didn't understand, and also new mechanisms that made my deck um, out... out um, and into the past and then also modern as if you're playing in a in a uh, you know a certain format that doesn't allow my old cards to be played now right. i just can't play with that deck anymore right. in that format so i always have to continue which i understand it's a good business model um so we can keep playing buying new cards they're cool and there's need for them so it's good but it also left me kind of feeling like if you don't play it you lose it and yeah. uh, if you don't keep up you lose it and so what commander was a really refreshing take for me when it first uh, entered into my life. Playing Commander, you could play with all these old cards, which unlocked a lot of my ability to play with cards I knew knew of from the past, and it also mm -hmm. allowed me to play some cards that I had had from the past. I didn't have to continually upgrade my deck. It was it was a little had a little more length of yeah. uh, lifespan to it. But on the other hand, it also unlocked other people to play their full on, I don't know, Black Lotus. Uh, right. Is that banned? Whatever. It, it's banned, but that's okay. Yeah. I, like there are power cards that are like, yeah. you know, the two hundred dollar cards that I would never have invested in, right, right, when I was there. So that's like, I mean, the pros and cons. Which, yeah, to be fair, I definitely don't, revived my love. I don't know that. if you've been keeping up. They just banned a bunch of two hundred card, two hundred dollar cards, and people are very upset. <laughs> I've heard the, I've heard it's, some of the drama. It's pretty rough, um, and I'm not, I'm not discounting that because I know there's, there's, uh, <laughs> there's some different opinions on it, and I am completely not yeah. well informed. But yeah, yeah the, the thing that bugs me about Commander is certain cards like this do nothing because yeah. you can only run one copy of each so even if you can play the mm -hmm. older cards there's some mechanics that just don't work at all or they're very mm -hmm. dependent on being one-on-one -on -one with a player yeah. so yeah I, I think there is no perfect format there has to be a variety of different ways to play um okay right with that so you said, got the, the harpy in i'll attack with that okay hold on. um okay i'm gonna block good Oh my gosh, if you play some instant. Like... <laughs> no, you you killed all my black lands, so I'm not... I can't. Uh, I can't. Um, not super keen on interacting right now. I just need to buy a tiny thing. <laughs> and then just somehow survive. But it's also my only way to live. But also I don't need it after I buy a turn with that. So, uh... <laughs> it's like one of those moments where you're like, I can see the checkmate coming. Uh, it's not looking good. I believe in you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, sure. This is fine. Uh, I'll just pass turn. Okay. Wolf dies. I untap. Hmm. Play another forest. 
We're going to tap for four and play a Blastoderm. Five, five, it has fading three. I have a dice around here. Ooh, this is... That's a rough one to read. All right, it's got three fading counters on it. I will attack you with my 5-5 five, five flying. This is a feeling I haven't felt in some time, which is where I'm going, man, did I do the wrong thing? Maybe I should have mulliganed. Maybe I should have gotten a new hand. Like, oh, did I misplay this? I can just, I can block. I have to block. I'm going to block. <laughs> Go. And I'm like, maybe I'm misplaying, I <laughs> but also maybe it's just because you're playing with a deck made out of different cards <coughs> there, and you actually could like put some construction thought into it and i don't know i don't know it always left me uh oh i didn't yeah did you I mean to do something else nope i'm fine with what i did i am kind of pretty pretty fine with it i could have It's not going to make a difference. It's so just not going to make a difference. Hmm. Hmm. But it like I think it really did just come down to the fact that it's like there there was no way for me to win this. Well, don't give up yet. <laughs> you technically have removal in the deck. Yeah, technically, but I saw it all and I know one last yeah, one of the things that I thought was really funny about this set, um, because it was such a step down in power level from the old Urza's block, is that a lot of the mechanics that they added were intentionally powered down and made you go card advantage negative. It's all discard a card, it's all sacrifice the thing. And so there were just no good decks that came from that and no mechanics that they could repeat. Arguably the best mechanics that came out in Mercadian Masks, that whole block were like the mercenaries and the rebels were really strong. But that's a design philosophy that Wizards is trying to stay away from because they make you do so much shuffling and searching on your turn and just slows the game down. Well, one thing that, that this all kind of turned me into is this, this guy who thought, man, modern is so hard to like uh, be competitive with. And mm -hmm. uh, especially because any set, I'm always ending up with like my deck is sub part of the people who... Who like put effort into their deck? It's either old or it's not expensive enough or it's not modern enough. Like like there's the all these things. But then we had our first draft at Frankenson's, and, uh -huh. and man, I drafted out of these booster packs where everyone was on even footing, and for the most part, everyone was kind of fresh to the game. So I mean, there was some people you who would study up on the cards ahead of time, but. And I would just come into it fresh and be like reading every card for the first time. And it was really cool because it kind of brought me back to when I didn't know any cards. So every card was fresh and it was fresh for them. So I wasn't at a disadvantage uh, as far as knowing the cards. I wasn't at a disadvantage as far as my deck. I was on an even playing field. And so I've always loved drafting because of that. I, I really yeah. think it makes it even. Now for new players, there still is that level of just like understanding interactions. But because it takes away some of the other advantages that a, a legacy player can can bring into the game. Mm -hmm. uh, it does even it a little bit more, and I think drafting is a great way for new players to break into it. Yeah, personally. oh, absolutely. I, I do like drafting. It's a good on-ramp for the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now I have to decide what I'm doing here, because like, there's so many options. I do have a 5-5 five, five here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I have a lot of, I have a lot of options. I'm going to add, I'm going to, uh, graciously because i'm new to this deck can i have tapped this instead of this it's yeah. like it does, wouldn't change a thing it's just colorless and instead of <coughs> that to do this no haste uh that was in last turn wasn't it i'm 90 percent sure you just played that <laughs> yeah you're right <laughs> but i sure do like to cheat we'll just leave it as is isn't it doesn't matter come do, on do let you want to cheat no it's, undo it, playing nothing would have changed anything. okay because there's no new information here. There's no... I, nothing has changed. I don't think there's any changing what, what this is doing. Because that's a 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Five, five flying. Yeah, it's a 5-5 five, five flying. Yeah. That's not good. And a 5-5 five, five with fading? Fading. Yeah, so each turn I'm going to remove a counter from this, and when I remove the last one, it dies. Lovely. Cool. A discount 5-5. Five, five. Just temporary... I just you have such big stuff, big and I've got uh, a decent board, but it's just too big for me to deal with. Uh, go ahead. I... Yeah. I'll just attack into a wall if I attack. Untap. Play another forest. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
if you find an answer, I, I will attack you for five. I have no other Lock, option. Yeah. But you know, and that's you were still at six. Really, but the funny thing is, I, I, I'm in a really good position except for those two cards. Yeah, because if you find a black, I'll just destroy it again. I know. Just say I know. I'm I'm <laughs> stuck. Like, yeah, happen. I'm I'm in trouble. So you know, go ahead. By the way, I have removal in my hand, but it is only destroy non-black creature. Also. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm also stuck. Which, you know, I think that is what I remember is like, why do I have all this red and everything I'm drawing is black? And I'm yeah. part of that maybe it's just because I'm I freshly shoveled no, it. In the original but deck. Look at that. There's so much black. In the original deck, I think there's seven red cards in the entire deck. <gasps> Wait. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm holding on. Ah. Uh, wow. Seal of Doom. Oh, you got it. It's there now. <laughs> you do. It's just sitting there and yes. we'll see what happens. Could anything could happen. Got to be clear, this was not in the original deck. I added it in place of a couple other cards that were like so much worse. So actually, this is even better than this what is I, even better than the deck I'm still was. Just like limping along. Yeah. Which again, I still feel like. Oh, it is such a struggle. I feel like there's nothing I can do right now but just say, uh, uh. <laughs> you know what? Just in case you do something with it. You can play that at instant speed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, reading. I, I never saw this it. Isn't this I never saw it. It's so hard to like... Anyways, I'll just uh, pass turn then and leave leave some lands mysteriously untapped. Well, yep. Yeah. Cool. Look at I, that. Ain't that your this, is, this is going great. Great for me. Oh, ha. Here do we it. go. Do it. Do it. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna play a Sky Shroud Sentinel. Hey, you're gonna find a, a, a swamp. Oh. oh, I wish. Oh no! It's just more like of this. Three more of this. I just can't keep. I, the wolves are are one of the biggest things I can't deal with because there's just a massive swarm of them. Plus two giant beat sticks. Well, that's okay. Now I have one one elves that don't do anything. So you know we're yeah. we're we're all doing great here. Mm, lovely. And when they come to play, he's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Um, so then, play another one. That's it. Uh, I, I'm down to one counter on this. Full send. I'll attack with my two big guys. Okay, I'm gonna uh, sacrifice this and destroy that guy. Yeah. And then at instant speed, I'm gonna give him plus two, minus two. Not trample, right? And nope. I'm just gonna block with my, uh, with my four, four, my, can I do something different? Uh, you can team block with things right now. It has, yeah, it, it's all... a seven three, so you need three attack. Oh, gonna three's not bad. Three's not bad. I kind of think. Like, am I? Do I need land? I don't. I have one card in my hand, so it's gonna be. And I'm at f six? six. You're at six. Oh, oh yeah, we're fine. We'll team block these guys. Okay. And then I'll go down to four. And yeah. Keep that that guy in. Okay. Woohoo! <laughs> That's yours. They don't call it a comeback, or what is it? <laughs> yeah. Let's do this thing. Hmm. You're really saying don't call it a comeback <laughs> when no, you're at no. four? We were in control the whole game. All right, all right. Never had a doubt. Don't doubt me. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's see what it Here, gives let's, me. Let's just keep track of your life total right Thanks, there. Thanks, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah, that's an interesting <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll like, we'll, we'll keep Please tell me you have to pay life to <laughs> use it. <laughs> like, it's a consideration. It's something we can think about, maybe. All right, well, let's just keep... Oh, like, now you're on just the mercenary plan. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Uh, yeah. Searching, searching, searching. Don't know what they do. Just looking at mana cost. None of this works You're going to be a little light on mercenaries you can search for. I mean, could be fun. Yeah. I think uh, maybe it turns into something. Okay. We're fine. We're fine. Look at the land. The land we have to play with here, though. Right? Oh yeah, you, you were land. super flexible here. Yeah. Here, it doesn't matter. No, we we got to cut this. It's got to be competitive this time. We're not cheating. Yeah. This time. Um. I'm gonna hold on to that. I think I have a good idea for that, but I can. Oh, we, yeah, you really are just going to lead me down. 
Your turn! Alright, I'm gonna untap. Oh gosh. Um. Yeah. See, this is this is where this deck struggles a little bit. Um. You have four blockers. How profitably can you block the fairy? Oh no. <laughs> Full send. <laughs> Yes! I oh, know okay. you're, you're pulling ahead. Okay. I, I have to push for you. So let's just get the obvious tricks yes, out easy. of the way. Uh -huh. um, uh, and this is also going to be a thing, I think. Um, <laughs> Are you going to regenerate? Well, see, that's the question. I got to do some, some calculus. <laughs> Go to one. I'll do some calculations. This might have been an interesting choice to actually do. Uh, I was aggressive, but it might work out. The infinite search might is work not out terrible. Out. So that's going to potentially die. He'll still be around. So we're trading. This is done. Uh, I could get rid of one of these guys. You could. Um, and and I could chump block in some way. Mm. And that mm -hmm. would have just been a waste. But otherwise, like I really want to keep that. It's almost like... Uh, and I think I can... Oh, but then it, it, it does put me down to one with two fewer stuff. Two, and then I... The numbers are floating. <laughs> it's like trying to survive with such a little amount of health. Yeah, left. you know the phrase "math is for blockers." This is that situation. Hmm. You figure it out. Three and just let it go. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do that. Woo. And uh, so you're not happens. you're not regenerate. That's done. Right, so I'll take three. Three. Living on the edge. That one lives. This oh one yeah, yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Okay. Let's go. Uh, I'm going to pay three and tap only any time you can play a sorcery. Oh my tap gosh, it. and now you have extra text that makes it so I can do the instant speed. It wouldn't have mattered, right? It wouldn't really have mattered. Oh, no, that wouldn't have mattered. You had to block with it. You needed it up for blocking. Yeah, I'm wondering if I... If I had a better... Oh, that could have been an interesting... Okay, so, <laughs> whatever. Let's do this thing. Yeah, I think I had a different... I should have... Mm. Oh, hey, that's a kind of a fun one to just draw into. That's cool. Uh, and put it into play. Okay, so we've got some good uh, potential to chump. The question is, do you have any more one mana cost mercenaries in your deck? That's I guess we'll find out. Ooh, we'll start with a two cost though. Hmm, Silent Assassin is strong. I think Spell Shaper. I think this could be. Let's, let's just make sure I'm not doing. Oh, that's not. Oh, yeah, it's not a mercenary. I'm actually running out of mercenaries. And you are activating brute oh, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the majority of mercenaries came out in Nemesis, so oh, it's super it. light. Yeah, which mercenaries actually exist in the it's early It's true, and sets. I'm like, that costs one or two, and they're all three. I literally whiff if I do that. If Was I did, this your last two? If I had done that. Mm -hmm. You can roll back. <laughs> you, know, you don't actually know what's in the deck. Yes, I would have definitely <clears throat> known well enough. No, see, again, at this point, <laughs> uh, I would not have known this deck well enough to... Uh, mm -hmm. I know I didn't technically get anything but i did see it all so yeah you're fine shuffling is probably pretty no you're at one uh okay I, let's, I believe in you let's not do that that guy okay and then um <laughs> there's no more search so unfortunately <laughs> they're just fodder um what is this for I have to. I have to. I get through your stuff. Like, if I attack with more than one, yeah, then it doesn't. You can just take it. So yes. maybe I attack with one, and just see what happens. Or uh, I'm gonna hold on off on it. Uh, we'll attack with with this guy. Two. What could go wrong? 
I'm gonna block. It's a positive trade for me. I'm going to uh, destroy that. Yes. <laughs> we still deal damage to each other though. What? <laughs> In combat. <laughs> that's, that's really funny. You know what though? That's exactly how it would have gone. I'd be like, well, I'm glad I tapped out. I'm glad I tapped Efficient out. Efficient use of mana. It would not have changed the thing. <laughs> I, 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 it did, probably wouldn't have even changed the thing. But I, I, I really Go don't ahead. have much I can do though. I think I am just gonna kind of struggle. Th All right, let's do this thing. for now. It's not good enough. Plague Witch. I need black to activate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, my, my removal may be bad. Alright. End of sentence. Go ahead. End of turn two. Alright, yeah. cool. Uh, untap. Upkeep. I may not have the, ba the best deck. And I may not have the fastest deck. Okay, this is a good one. Uh... Seal of Fire. <laughs> okay, that's a real card. You're going to pay now. I'm just going to immediately pop that wolf. I just yeah. don't see any other reason not to do that. Okay, I need also a Nemesis card. That was also added to the deck. Uh, it had, like, no removal. It was so weird. Yeah, that would be in a, in a problem place. And I, I could do that. But, you know, instead, you know what's coming. The Grain of Tears. Get that black out of my face. Yep. And then, um, I can't, I can't. So I can, one, two, three, uh, I can just, what's the difference? What's the difference? Let's attack for four. I'll block with the Sentinel. Okay. Are you done? Your turn. All right. I, Don't be a black. Don't be a black. I need to draw the worm is actually my only. <laughs> oh, it's not a swamp. <laughs> it's not a swamp. <laughs> All right. Go. Woohoo. Untap. Okay. All right, well, here we go. We're going. We're going places now. Alley Grifters. Oh, no. When it becomes blocked, you discard a card. Yeah, that's a good time. Uh, that's, that's fun. I, again, I need to... So it's going to be four, and I need at least one. So let's do... Let's do the uh, two. For six. Okay, so how are we getting out of this? Okay. I kill it. I take the four, I go to 16. Is that the first damage I've taken? <laughs> I like it. That's about right. All right. That's, that's I'll awesome. call it a comeback. It was strategy. Awesome. All right. I got, got some land left. Ugh. I'm going to play a Sky Shroud Ridgeback. Oh, okay. That could do something. Yeah. yeah. It'll do something. And now now we're going to go with the old school magic special and just use cards as counters. It's got two fading Obviously, counters. Obviously, that's what we did. Go ahead. Not that I remember. I was very young. <laughs> I don't think I would have piloted even this as good back then. I think this is decent. I know everyone's going like, what an idiot. You should have played this. It's like, guys, I'm basically a new player. I know 25 <laughs> years sounds like a long time. Um, You're going to discard a random card from your hand. You can shuffle it. I saw which one you picked, so I'm guessing it's the other one I want to get, right? <laughs> I could be playing is live it? games. You don't know. It's this one, though. I don't know. Okay. I don't is know this? either. I don't know. Yeah. That, one of those questions. No, that was not the one. That's the other thing you always hear with a new rough. player. Uh, what's the right choice? What should I do? Um, which one should I kill? Okay. Uh, uh, it's a two, three. I just need to retain some chump blocker action and swing for the weight and swing for the. I think just, I think, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to go with um, eight. I'll, I'll block, um, we'll block the Silent Assassin. Here. Okay, and we're going to kill it. Yeah, that's fine. And the six, six is going through. So I take, I take six. No, Swamp. No, Swamp. No, Swamp. So I'm down to 12. Right, so it started becoming this tribal deck. It's not a swamp. It's not a swamp. <laughs> I play another forest and pass. We got him, boys. I know. Oh gosh, this is so painful. I'm not. I don't have any forest left in this deck. Go ahead. And I and I so I started understanding cards better, and so yeah. I knew like if I just played my my deck long enough, mm -hmm. and I, I and so I only had a few decks through my life, and it was this one that became a lot of other things. Six to your face. I got a six. Um, and pass turn, and then. 
And then, but, but still, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to end six to, for the win. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> But no, I mean, it's really interesting because I, I, I was so tired of this deck losing so much. Ironically, I just won with it. <laughs> but because of the upgrades you made. So I really don't think anything would have happened because there would have been no removal for that. It really does out. need that. Yeah. Actually, that's a bad example. But this is, so I brought it, I brought it what this deck became. And so uh, if you look through it, you'll notice, by the way, I only have two cards left uh, that are from the original deck. And there is one of them, a Mercadian Masks. Uh, which I called Mercedian Mats for a long time. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's that swamp. And then the only other thing still from that deck is another swamp. Everything else is new. But it became this zombie deck that then through the years I added more to it, added more to it. Mm -hmm. But it was like I understood what zombies can do. They make other zombies stronger and they bring stuff back from the dead. Lord of the Undead, my hero. And it was like, that's so cool. And then one day I played a draft. And actually I don't have it with me because I think it was stolen. But... My my Celestia deck. I came away with oh, from yeah. the Celestia draft with this really cool looking deck. I put a seaborn. You put a seaborn muse into it for me, and like it's starting to really be cool. And it gets stolen. And then I had somehow somewhere I lost it. On. And then um, the other one was this Merfolk deck I have with me. And uh, then the uh, slivers. And so there it is. Always like creatures because creatures are easy to understand. Mm -hmm. I was always just so put off by. All the blue, uh, garbledy goop you could do. Blue, how you blue players, counter spells, and blah. And I was like, no, <laughs> just give me, just give me like black. I can understand what, what swamps do. I get it. I, I understand it. And, uh, oh, and then maybe I'll expand into one blue deck, Merfolk. And that was the counter spell player. But I never got into these combo decks and all this because, you know. Yeah, you also needed a swamp that I didn't destroy. I know. Yeah. Boy, hero of the game was God. killing the swamp sauce. Yeah. Oh, boy. No, but the one that I will never forget, it's a worthless card, but, like, lives on in my mind and my heart, is, uh, I'll find it. But what really brought me back to the game after each time I felt like, man, I can't compete with these decks that I'm trying to compete with, was occasionally a draft. Oh, and then I have this deck, like a new deck, and brought new life to me. And really? Then another draft, and I play with... Uh, I think it was an unglued draft. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, that's so funny and awesome, and I had so much fun. Was that the one in our condo? That, that was the unstable. Unstable, right, where, where yeah. Where you crank yeah. the widgets or whatever? Uh, yeah, well, no, that was uh, the the different one. Oh, was it? Yeah, there was unstable, and there was another one that had the uh, conspiracy. But oh, maybe that you're Cons talking about something different. Yeah, but yeah, Conspiracy yeah. was another draft I loved. That was the voting. Man, yeah. conspiracy, like, do you, drafts were just have yeah, always yeah. been, I think, my favorite format because of how it balances things out. And because mm -hmm. it's all fresh, and uh, you make the jankiest, dumbest-looking deck, and somehow I can still win. Yeah. I can't win in a lot of e uh, EDH, EDH settings because my deck's not good enough. I can't win in modern because I'm not keeping up with buying new cards. Mm -hmm. And so for me, as a person who, who takes so long away from the game, uh, drafting is, a, is something that keeps me hooked but also something that I think really feels good as a beginner. And the other thing uh, that one time I got hooked into, which is basically drafting, was a tournament that our car my card shop that I went to for a little while, for a long while, uh, Dark Side Games, uh, they hosted this tournament where it was only one set or something like that. And so you could, you, you could like oh, buy... It was, it was like a progression league, right? Where yeah. you get packs periodically and yes. upgrade your stuff. You could upgrade it with additional yeah. packs. And you could buy like two packs and start your deck. So again, it's like we all had subpar decks. Right. And we're playing on an even playing field. And I competed and I came in not last. So like <laughs> I think really for me right. over the last 25 years, because I haven't been able to be as committed to it as, as I know other people can be, um, the only thing that keeps me in it is formats that allow me to keep competitive, whether that's mm -hmm. a draft or a tournament that keeps it uh, even. And that's very contrary to the collectibleness of these cards, where yeah. there's so much value in the expensive cards because right. they're better. And that's simply something that I can't spend, well, maybe won't spend money uh, mm -hmm. Uh, but just just because it's not a forefront hobby for me, I can't spend that money to keep competitive with those more expensive decks. Yeah. So I'm just like, give me the cheap the cheap formats. Absolutely. I mean, and I know that's I'm not trying to insult anybody because <laughs> I've also looked into buy. I, oh, I really wanted to make the uh, Ur Ur uh, Zer Zer the Enchanter yes. EDH deck, and I was yeah. like, oh, I finally have money in my life, and I can maybe make a deck that that means something. And then I I never actually. And Locked you can go through the ceiling with that deck, too. Yeah. I mean, like, the, the top end is oh, so expensive. Oh, it could be thousands of dollars with yeah. the right stuff. So, oh, uh, 
and that yeah, that never happened. And so mm -hmm. I've never really been able to compete with the expensive yeah. stuff. So. The last yeah. thing I'll say about this deck, though, um, we didn't really get to it. The deck, as it came out, had four stone rains and two rain of tears, maybe even three rain of tears. Like oh. it has so much land Lines. destruction, it's insane. And just the fact that there's a lot of people that don't like land destruction in their games, and this yeah. is a starter deck that's just like, yeah, we're like land destruction on main. Yeah. It's so fun. Oh, man. But yeah, you didn't really hit any of the red stuff in here. It's just I, like a mono black maybe deck. Maybe I didn't shuffle it well? I don't know. But no, hey, I did want to show something, though, that I found. I was looking through Mom's Facebook. And, yeah. And uh, because I knew it would be really fun, there's a picture of us. Magic. So we can... <laughs> But that's us at eight at my, me. That, that's I believe, right around the same time. I was right? eight and you were 11. And yeah. that would have been us when we first started. There's that, that, uh, camcorder. And then there's us, uh, another one of when we were, <laughs> that's the kind of nice. That's nice, a good picture yeah. there, man. Anyways, that's us as kids yeah. playing games with freaking thrashing Wumpus. The most classic rare you could ever get. Oh, it's so good. It deals one damage to each creature. In I was really hoping you were going to draw so that being at one life. Oh yeah! <laughs> Not being able to activate it. <laughs> oh, because I've been looking forward to that one, and the other one that I re recognize the art so well was Cataran Enforcer. Yeah. Like, I, another one that I'm not even sure what it does anymore, but I see those pictures and I'm like, yes, those shock troops. Only just because I think you stole that, and maybe this for a, your Goblin deck. Um, who knows? I don't know. All of our cards just went into their random P pot. Putting a, a four-cost soldier into a goblin deck is definitely oh, something that I would do. They look like goblins. They do look like goblins, okay. but, uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe not. I do, I do recognize them, though. <laughs> Le yeah. Larceny. Larceny. Yeah. I don't know. There's some of these pictures. This card is just beat. It's Silent so scuffed. Awesome. They just really stuck in my Over mind. Over 25 years. Those are the only cards that I remember. Maybe I remember Molting Harpy. Other than that, everything is, like, foreign to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that became the Croesus red, black, blue, because I added blue because I wanted a dragon. And then I thought, this blue is not working out. So we took out the blue, took out the Croesus, and it was a black, red zombie deck. And then we took out the red, because it was like, why do I have red? It just works better with black. And that's how we get to the zombie deck eventually. But, yeah. But it's it's still pretty scary. Baby. It's a solid, like, turn four yeah, zombie still over works, red deck. Yeah. But it doesn't work against other people who are open to the same number of cards true. what is this legacy or vintage yeah like, or like it, crazy? it would be legacy but it and i can't not compete against other vintage. Vintage. yeah so definitely i'm a casual i'm a normie i'm not just a normie guy but i played dnd much more than normal yeah. so so if you were to throw like one takeaway to this recommending should new players play the game what what would you recommend new players do or what what's the the main takeaway here for you well there's two things that if i was a new player would be a hump for me to get over the first thing is i'm cheap and so if you have money, then spend the money to make a good deck and you'll have a blast. Now, I know that's unreasonable because you don't want to spend money on something you're not already having fun, fun mm -hmm. doing. So the second thing that I've done much more of instead of just unloading cash on good cards is, uh, you know, there is obviously finding the format that you can manage to stay affordable as you enter into this very awesome hobby um, or, or profession. You're good. Uh, but uh, and of course, then it comes to the collectible and the investment mm -hmm. part. But. The other thing that I really would say is this is a game of rules where every card is an extension of the rule book. And there's so much reading of the rule book. If I was playing Settlers of Catan uh, and, and they kept coming up with a new, new rule on every single turn, if any, if I'm playing soccer and every player had their own unique rule, then like, boy, I would, it would be really hard yeah. because every time, every new player I'm playing against, I have to like read up on their rules. So as a new player, the biggest advice that I'd have is uh, create a deck and then stay to it even if it's bad and learn your deck through really well so you feel comfortable and confident with playing your deck. And then with that deck that you're comfortable and, com comfortable and com confident playing, then add the cool new cards as you want to buy a $2 card that makes your deck 10 times better. And the next $5 card that makes your 10... Your, and then you say, oh man, that holographic is really cool. You buy your 200 card... $200 card and you finally decide maybe now I'll put sleeves on everything. But that's that's the path that I see new players it would be the, the mm -hmm. best way to get into it. And find people who aren't going to play against your $20 deck with a $200 deck because that's not fun either. Make sure that the people you're playing with, um, well, I, I don't know, you know, how can you make sure of that? But hope 
and find the people. But it really is important finding the right people to play find with, right? People. Like try different lo yeah. local game stores, get yeah. some friends together, teach other people to play. All, yeah. all be beginners at the same time. Right. And, but if you like competitive nature, like yeah. find the competitive. There are so many groups that do things so differently. Yeah. Just as in D&D &D where every group can really impact the gameplay and magic, depending on who you're playing with, can tremendously impact the game. Yeah. So, yeah. And there's specific formats for that too. If you, if you want a cheap deck, Popper is all commons. I think the most competitive popper decks right now are like 30 or 40 bucks on the budget side. Yeah. Like that for a full competitive deck, that's hard to beat. Yeah. 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 Oh, and if you're really like, oh gosh, there's a lot of rules, then f build a deck specifically that has very little like stuff to read. Oh yeah. Which is totally possible. Mm -hmm. And then if someone, and then hope that you find someone to play against where if they have a lot of words and you're just like, well, you read it for me, but they're not going to cheat against you. Because that's another thing that can happen. If you're in that mode where you just say, okay, I trust you. You know your deck well enough. I'm not going to read that card you just played. Yeah. Well, that gives them the opportunity to cheat if they're that kind of player. Or person. Right. And there's there's so. no way to protect against that. You just judge You just play with different people. Point. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. Hey, one. This one. I know. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> what a loser. He doesn't know how to play magic. All right. Cut the tape. <laughs> We're done. Cool. Well, that was fun. Is Thanks. Outro? Uh, do we want... I think we're okay with that. Outro music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.